I have a sweet recipe for you today. When sugar cane is refined into sugar, molasses is the co-product. While not as sweet as sugar, this dark syrup adds rich flavor and texture to dishes like the American classic, good old pork and beans. Today, we're preparing pulled pork and pit beans with a creamy slaw. I'm Chef Michael Williams, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome to the kitchen. We are about to dive into my signature dish, my favorite pork roast recipe in the world. Molasses and cumin roast pork with pit beans. It's so epic. Let's get right into it. We're gonna start off by chopping up some veggies. We're actually not gonna start with the pork. We're gonna start with the pit beans. Pit beans, you might ask, well, what are they? Well, you know, Texas barbecue, the beans that are cooked in the smoker. We're not quite going there. We're gonna cook them in the oven, but delicious nonetheless. So let's get started. I've got a pot heating up right now. We wanna chop some veggies and saute them off, starting with onion. So I am gonna cut the top and the bottom off of my onion here, as I do. I'm gonna cut it in half like so which just opens the door to an easy peel. Nothing worse than struggling with that paper thin peel of an onion. And let's just go ahead and give a rough chop on this onion. Because we're gonna cook these beans for a couple of hours in the oven, everything's gonna get soft and kind of start breaking down. And so, you know, a little bit of a rough chop, it doesn't really matter. We're not doing, you know, specific, precise cuts here. This is a rustic dish, the kind of thing you can have fun with. So onions, carrots, I've got some beautiful bunch carrots here. I clean them up really well. No need to peel them when they've got the nice soft skins on them like this. Just give them a good clean and then chop away. Roughly cutting them about the same size as those diced onions as you can see. Right up to the stems. Celery, how about that? So we've got three sticks here which is gonna serve us just right. I'm gonna slice right across the stick for a perfect little shape. Finally, let's get some garlic going. You know what, I'm actually gonna get the veggies going in the pan just before I get to the garlic. So I'm gonna add some oil in. I mentioned this pan's nice and hot already. So we're gonna add our oil and then we'll get our veggies going. And then let's see how fast we can crush some garlic. Handy little scraper, tricks of the trade, fantastic tool right there. So garlic, yeah? When I'm needing lots of garlic at one time, I get my pot, because I can crush. But by crushing it with a, a nice good pot, you gotta get some weight into it. So it's you know not easy for everybody to do that, but if you can, look at how quickly this garlic gets peeled. I'm gonna grab about you know six cloves here because I really want that garlic to sing in this recipe. Those are pretty big cloves, so maybe two more and we're laughing. Hear that sizzle? I love the sounds of the kitchen. The sounds of the kitchen, they just, they warm your soul, you know? We'll give these a quick chop and get them into the pan too. And that'll be the veggie portion of this pit bean recipe. So a couple quick chops. Clean and organized, right? That's how you stay happy. And that's how you enjoy the whole process. It just feels good. It feels good to stay organized. We'll keep those veggies moving. What we're gonna do pretty soon is add some turmeric powder. I've got a beautiful turmeric powder here from Level Ground, local company. I've got my ancho chili powder, am I right? A little bit of salt, and then we're gonna finish that off with a little bit of a deglazing with balsamic vinegar. This stuff is delicious. Now, you don't need the super primo stuff like I've got here. It just so happens that's all I've got on hand. So any balsamic will do for this particular recipe. 
Okay? And then, once we've got all our spices in, we're gonna add in our beans. I've got some chickpeas, and I've got some kidney beans. Now, the beans that you use for this recipe, super flexible. Pinto beans, kidney beans, cannellini beans. You can totally change it up. You can even buy the can of mixed beans if you wanna get a nice variety without having to buy a bunch of different cans, okay? So we've got that. We've given this a few minutes now, and as you can see, things are starting to caramelize. We've got some color happening. So let's go ahead and get our turmeric in. One of my favorite spices in the world and one of the most nutritionally potent spices to incorporate into your diet. I use it all the time. I'm gonna put in a couple teaspoons. That's really gonna bring out, oh, the smell. Oh my goodness, as soon as that turmeric hits the oil, the fragrance is so beautiful. About the same of the ancho chili powder. A couple teaspoons or so. And let's just give that a bit of a stir. Let those spices do their thing. Of course, we're gonna need a little bit of salt in there. I've got unsalted beans. And now, I'm gonna add in this balsamic vinegar, which is really gonna choke you out if you're not careful. So do be careful when you add the vinegar. This comes out slowly, so it looks like I'm adding tons, but really just a few tablespoons or so. There we go, oh my goodness. Already, how good does that look? Now before that balsamic vinegar gets too concentrated, I wanna get the rest of my liquid in. I've got some beautiful organic diced tomatoes, lots of moisture in there. I'll dump those right in. Excellent. Give that a stir. Make sure we're not sticking anywhere on the bottom. Make sure everything's released. We are looking fantastic here. All we need to do now is add our beans and this is ready to hit the oven. So, in go the chickpeas. In go the kidney beans. The final ingredient for this recipe, this beautiful molasses. A few tablespoons of that. And then it's gonna go into a 300 degree oven for two hours. We're gonna let it slowly just simmer away, caramelize, concentrate. It's gonna be beautiful. Just before it gets in there, you can always check where your seasoning levels are at even before it's done. Mm, knowing, knowing that it's gonna kinda caramelize and concentrate down, that's beautiful. We'll be back later in the show to pull together this molasses and cumin roast pork shoulder with pit beans. But before that, we're hitting the road. You don't want to miss that. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. We are here in downtown Victoria at the Atrium. I want to welcome you folks to my shop, Urban Forage. All kinds of great products available, whether you want to just buy a marinade, a sauce, a dressing, and turn it into your own dish, or you need, you know, the full dish ready to go. That's what we're all about. Now, what we want to do here is teach you guys how to make the turmeric sultana dressing, and from there we're going to take it in a few different directions. Let's go meet up with Chef Dan in the back and get right to it. Hi. How are we doing, Dan? Pretty good, man. Getting right ready on. to start this dressing. I love this dressing. Me too. Right? Just a couple of easy steps. Yeah. I've already sauteed over here. Get something going. That's our shallots and our fresh turmeric. Yeah, and fresh, fresh turmeric's beautiful. Fresh ginger. So this is a, a great little step here where you roast the spices. Just bring out the flavors. We're toasting them a little bit. It really amplifies things just a touch. It's just, it's a great little step. So that's the cayenne pepper. Yeah. That's ground coriander. Beautiful. And some nice Himalayan sea sea salt. Now you want to get it on the pan a bit, get a little bit of that spice yeah. toasted up. There, there's that moment, maybe about a minute or a minute and a half in, where boom, the fragrance, right? It's it amazing. Just pops out. It's so good. So we got some apple cider vinegar here. We're gonna pour that in. You want to heat it up a little bit. Yeah. Because. Grab that. All you. these 
beautiful raisins are gonna go in there and it'll just soften them for when you when you stick blend it. Nice or organic sultanas. Every One of the most important things to buy organic is raisins. You know, grapes, they, 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 they've got a lot of pesticide content on them and when you concentrate oh, really? them down into raisins, absolutely. It's funny. You don't think about all that all the time, you know? All right, so, this is ready, man. Yeah, we've got quite a good simmer on that. Things have softened up. Those raisins are ready to be blended, right? Beautiful. Oh, that smell, man. Isn't that amazing? It's got the sweetness. I love, yeah. This is just going to be a really basic, simple salad. One of uh, the salads that we sell in the case here. Beautiful. I'm going to so, add my lime. Lime juice and zest, citrus. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capture, so capture cool. both of them because they both offer yeah. something different. Okay, I'm going to blend. All right. All right. I hope you can do with a little stick blender. I got my favorite little stick blender. Go for it, Dan. I'll just get it blended a bit, then I'll start adding the oil. Oh, I wish you guys could be here right now. The smell, so incredible. Okay. Really, really good. All right, here we go. Now that's grapeseed oil, right? Grapeseed. Right? It's got a good fashion. It's just like not a strong flavor, so it's good for dressing. Boom. There we go. Yeah. That's perfect. All right, let's dress this, shall we? Let's do it, boss. <laughs> We're gonna finish it off with a little bit of fresh chopped parsley because you can't there beat you fresh herbs, right? Now, we got our salad here, yep. right? Delicious salad, salad dressing, but salad dressings aren't only salad dressings. I know. We use them in lots of different ways. We take this turmeric sultana dressing, we whip it into cream cheese for a fantastic spread. We drizzle it on amazing top of our color. breakfast wrap, exactly. right? Oh, it's with so the good. Egg, the sweetness with the egg is now, amazing. I think it's time to taste, buddy. Uh, Let's do so. it. Oh, man. So good, so potent, Ooh. so much flavor. There you have it, folks. You've got the keys. Mm. Make it yourself. Thanks, Dan. No worries, buddy. Let's hit the studio. Cool. It's back into our kitchen. We're pulling together my signature recipe, molasses and cumin roast pork shoulder with pit beans. We've got the beans in the oven. You need to know how to make this pork. It's Fantastic. We're gonna do it right now. I've got some onions. As you can see, I've sliced nice and thick here. And what these are gonna be, they're gonna be a bed. And the, the pork is gonna sit right on top of these onions so that we can add a secret ingredient, a beautiful liquid, which will keep things moist and happy while our pork is roasting slowly. Not only are these onions gonna keep the pork elevated and out of that beautiful liquid, but they're gonna provide a delicious accoutrement to the final product, to the final dish. So good. I love this technique. I've been teaching this one for years, but I haven't shared it with you guys yet. So let's, let's roll with this. Let's get our pork into the casserole dish so that we can start dressing this up. A fantastic cut of meat here pork shoulder blade roast or pork butt, often synonymous. This is a Tanadice Farms pork, I love this stuff. Here I have what we added to those beans right at the end, this beautiful molasses. And this is what's gonna give our pork such a fantastic crust coating. So I'm gonna dribble, drizzle, drizzle this on liberally. We're gonna start just to get the bottom done. I need to grab my pastry brush, which is over here. So let's go ahead and spread that evenly. We're painting this pork roast with molasses, right? So we'll start there. Now I'm gonna start seasoning this up. I've got some whole cumin seeds here, okay? Those are gonna go on fairly liberally. I love the crunch of the whole cumin seeds. A Little bit of salt and pepper, why not? Red pepper flakes. This is what's gonna give you the heat. It's gonna give this a bit of a kick. So we're gonna be, you know, depending on your taste buds, either heavy handed or light, because they do definitely have some spice. Okay, and then the final ingredient, and we're gonna flip this over and do the rest of it, is fresh ginger. Beautiful, fresh ginger root. Really adds a delicious element to this dish. So I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just slicing these as thin as I can. And then from there, 
I'm gonna line up all these slices and then get one more slice on it. And again, trying to slice them as thin as I can. Now this is a bit of an advanced technique to get it really nice and fine with just those two cuts, if you will. So, you know, feel free to just chop, chop, chop until they're the appropriate size. But if you have a nice sharp knife and you wanna test your knife skills, this is a great way to do just that. So now we've got these, you know, beautiful little fairly fine julienne bits of ginger that's going to go on and then we just need to do the rest so once again i'm going to be even a little bit more liberal this time because i'm going to spill it down the sides okay we're going to really paint this with our molasses the edges all over that top so do your best to spread that around really nice and evenly and then just repeat that process, okay? A little bit more ginger, salt, pepper, cumin, chili flakes, and we are almost, almost ready for the piece de resistance, the secret ingredient, the chili flakes. Here it is, you ready for it? Phillips, intergalactic root beer, that's right. We're gonna pour some of this fantastic, very herby, rooty, so many good things going on in this root beer right into here. And we're gonna bring it up right to the level of the bottom of that pork roast. And what's gonna happen is the drippings from the roast are going to contribute themselves to that root beer, the onions, all those flavors are gonna blend together. We're gonna roast this. Now you have options. We're gonna, I like to roast this slowly, 220 degrees, tw 10 to 12 hours overnight. That's how I love doing it. Or you can fire it in the oven right first thing in the morning. Uh, although, if you wanna get it done quicker, 350 degrees, hour and a half, two hours until it's fork tender. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Let's pretend like we already did one, which I did, and and it's ready. I know this guy's hot. There's our beans, baby. Check that out, right? And this right here is our pork roast. Look at the nice juice in the bottom of that. Let's go ahead and cut into this right away. We're ready. You wanna make sure you remove those strings. How I like to do this is I'm just gonna cut it in half like this. And then we're gonna slice. Now I told you, fork tender, right? What does that mean? It means you could grab a fork and pry this apart with ease. And I don't even need a fork. I can tell you right now, watch this. Like effortless, right? Beautiful, so good. So it starts with a couple beautiful slices of pork. Let's grab ourselves a serving spoon and serve up some of these beautiful pit beans. Like, look at that. All the colors, all the veggies, right? Don't be shy on this. Lots of vegetables, getting some extra fiber and protein out of those beans. In fact, this bean recipe, beautiful standalone dish, just like that, just like that, all by itself. But hey, beans are of course the perfect complement to a nice beautiful roast pork. You know what else is? Slaw, of course. We gotta grab some slaw from the fridge. All ready to go. I've used this fantastic local dressing. Sometimes you need a little bit of help. I'm making everything from scratch here except for the dressing. So I'm gonna go to one of my favorites. We'll load up our dish here like so. And then, how to finish this off so that it is incredibly beautiful is with some of these beautiful onion rings. Like, look at them. They're perfectly caramelized and a little bit of that jus. Oh, yeah. I'm happy right now. I'm excited. I cannot wait to dig into this. In fact, I mean, I just can't. I'm not going to. I refuse to wait. <clears throat> There you have it. Molasses and cumin roast pork shoulder and pit beans, my signature dish. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. My signature dish is on the table and we need a pairing to match it. 
with us to help do that is Bailey Williamson from Blue Gross Vineyard. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Mike. It's great to be back. Yeah, absolutely. You're a seasoned pro here in my kitchen, aren't you? <laughs> well, it's always fun to come and taste all the great food. Right on. Well, you know, you've nailed the pairings in the past. I gave you an idea of what I was going to make today. Molasses and cumin, slow roasted pork shoulder, lots of ginger. I got a root beer kind of a look, reduction in there for a sauce, pit beans, so a bit of a you know, rich dish. What do you think? Well, you know, what I brought today was the uh, Quill Pinot Noir. Okay. I brought that because it's not too heavy. It's a little lighter style red, but it's got good acidity, which I think will cut well and, and um, complement the richness of the dish. Awesome. Let's have a taste, shall we? Absolutely. I'm always excited to try. A delicious beverage pairing. You go with great food. You know, they, they obviously go hand in hand. Am I right? Food and wine. Yeah. Nothing better than that. So it looks nice and light, right? Not, not, yeah. not too heavy here. A lighter style red, but with lots of sort of cherry notes. Mmm, smells delicious. Yeah. And a little higher acidity, I think it'll cut well with the fattiness and the and the richness of the. Uh, I'm gonna find out right now. Beans. Yeah, please Fantastic. feel free to dig in. I'm interested. This is one of my favorite recipes. I love, love, love cooking this dish. It looks fantastic. Almost as much as I love eating it. <laughs> what do you think? How's the pork? The pork is fantastic. A little bit but, of spice on there. Yeah. Yeah. This is perfect. I think you're right. Delicious. Wonderful. This it's is awesome. Yeah. Match made in heaven. Totally. So <laughs> Blue Gross Vineyard, tell us a, a little bit of in details. You know, um, expansion in the vineyard and harvest is well underway at this time of year. And yeah. so uh, very exciting time uh, and, uh, you know, for people to come up and visit and, and check it out. I've heard it's beautiful. Oh. Fantastic, beautiful couch and valley. Yeah. You know, here on the island. Totally. How do you go wrong, right? This is perfect. Thank you so much for coming today. Mike, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Check out our website where you'll find the lowdown on today's show. I'm Chef Mike, and don't forget, dinner's better when we eat it together. I'm gonna enjoy some more of this mm -hmm. delicious food here, and then probably have a couple more sips of that wine. <laughs>